In the video, How Does Google Work, Part 1, we introduced the random surfer to try to define what does it mean to be a relevant website. In this part, we're going to just touch the tip of the iceberg for uh, discussing the mathematics behind how Google works. So start with our mini web uh, right here, six different sites, and we want to somehow quantify the structure of this website of these websites. So we will form what's called the adjacency matrix where each row is going to contain uh, a one if site A links to sites B and C in this case you'll see ones uh, for the second and third entries. For site B which contains no outlinks you will see zeros all the way across that row. Site C has three outlinks and so those correspond to the ones in the third row and so on. So if we continue this process now we have a matrix which represents the structure of this website purely based on uh, hyperlinks to and fro the various websites. What we're going to do with this adjacency matrix is um, first we're going to have to handle the row of zeros uh, at uh, site B because site B is what some of us call a, a dangling node. It's analogous to like a PDF file that several different sites might link to and you would uh, be stuck there if you are a random surfer. So we'll put ones across those rows. We're going to make another adjustment by turning the adjacency matrix into a stochastic matrix where the non-zero entries represent the probability of traveling from site uh, I to site J. So in this case the one halves, both of those in the first row indicate if you are at site A you have one half probability of traveling to site B and one half probability of traveling to site C. The sum of all the rows is one making this a stochastic matrix. The last modification is to say 85 percent of the time we will click following the stochastic matrix S, alpha S. But then the other 15% of the time, we can teleport typing in a new URL in that case. Once we have what's called the Google matrix, the power method, which multiplies this matrix times a state vector, uh, which we start with a uniform vector, will multiply that and normalize at each step along the way. We get the eigenvector for the matrix G. And it converges pretty rapidly. Uh, now, a more detailed discussion of the math, you should go search a video pertaining to the power method. But it is good that this method converges quickly.